and it's going to be available on Amazon and Flipkart. Over to you, sir. Thank you, Ashish. Abdul, first state, why is pollution important to you as a person? Why is it that we are bothered about it? Let's just discuss that first in one minute and then proceed. I think most people do not know what is affecting them when you have PM 2.5s at a high level. Now in simple English language, not in a doctor's language, I would say that there are three types of particulates which we have in Delhi. One is of course PM1, PM2.5 and PM10. I'll give you today's readings in Nehru Place at where we are located. PM2.5s were 146, PM10s were 182 microgram per meter cube and PM1s were 105. Now mark this PM1 was close to 80% of the PM2.5. These are very fine particles and these particles go into the lungs, into the alveoli and go along with the oxygen into our arteries. Once it enters the arteries, there is a substance called alveo macrophage which is injected by our immunity system which sort of makes these PM1 stick around our arteries and so we'll have blockages. And with these blockages we'll need stems. So the point is that when PM1 particles, these are very, very fine nanoparticles, get into our arteries, we are, call it the, the storage area for all these. Somebody asked me, what is the simple pollution, uh, solution to pollution in Delhi? I said, well, the ideal would be triple or quadruple the population of Delhi. So you have free air purifiers. Today we have maybe 20 million, and then we'll have 60 million or 80 million free air purifiers. Human beings which are inhaling these PM1s and PM2.5s and PM10 particles and exhaling zero. So instead of having machines, you have human beings, but of course there'll be other kinds of pollution. So that is not quite a very easy way out, but yes, you should understand that you are a walking, talking air purifier. That's it. So you're breathing in and that is being stored. You've seen Dr. Naresh Trehan's pictures of lungs and this is something also which happens, the PM2.5 particles get stuck and all over your lungs and make them black. Now, in a way, it may be a good idea that your lungs get coated so the particles are then not getting into your bloodstream in the same speed at which they would not, which they would otherwise. The issue really is that we need to watch out. Now, another question. What is the surface area of your lungs? I ask this question many, many times. Does anybody know how many square centimeters, meters is the surface area of your lungs? The surface area of your lungs, now imagine, is equal to between half and a full size tennis court. Okay, that means between 160 and 320 square meters. It's a huge surface area. So when you, this consists of something like 50 crore of these alveoli, like grape-like structures hanging in our lungs, which make the surface area huge. So what is happening is that when we breathe in, all these surface areas get coated and the PM1 particles travel with the oxygen into, into our bloodstream because the return blood is coming into the alveoli and that is how the the oxygen gets transferred from gases, gaseous state to the liquid and that is the way it happens. Now, we have close to 100,000 kilometers of nerves, veins and so on and so forth in our system. We have about 5 liters of blood which circulates about 1500 times. So, what is going to happen with all this is that if we are breathing in all this garbage, our lungs get clogged and you can measure using a pulse oximeter and you can measure the blood oxygen levels. If you have, it's a very simple device between 2 and 20,000 rupees it costs, medical grade close to 20,000, 
a commercial grade at 2000 and there is also a free app which you can check but that is the accuracy is not so good but if you are 98 to 100 percent you're doing well if you are around 96 you better do pranayam and get your lungs uh, into action and if you are lower than 96 i think you should meet your doctor pulmonary specialist and get your lung function test done to make sure that you are okay that your lungs are not getting into trouble so this is I would say a suggestion which I have for an average person living in Delhi. <coughs> now, what? Where, my question is: Where is this PM1 coming from? These nanoparticles? Where are they coming from? I don't know. I've been asking this question of various ambassadors, saying, "What is it in New York? What is it in Boston? What is it in Tokyo?" So far, no answer. I don't know. Is, is PM1 over PM2.5 in Delhi 0.8 to 1.0? Is it the same everywhere or not? I have no idea. I'm asking questions, but still I've not received a reply. The CO2 levels, now, this is as far as health is concerned. So, we could talk about air purifiers. We say that they should not emit ozone. Now, now you have an air purifier which is meeting EU conditions. Is it okay for you? Answer is no. Why? Because if you are in EU, you are in say Switzerland or you are in a country with clean air, then the ozone levels are not that high. And the air purifier which emit ozone in those countries are okay because the ozone outside plus the ozone produced at the map is still safe. But if you have ozone levels high in some place, like in Delhi, then if you add ozone on top of it, you are in trouble. Why? Because when you breathe ozone, the lungs get cleaned up. Ozone clear, when there is a lightning, there is lightning, the air feels fresher. Why? Because, because of that ozone is produced in the lightning, and ozone produces odor, it cleans it up, it makes the set, uh, all the particles settle, etc. So the same thing happens in our lungs. So the speed at which these PM 2.5s and PM 1s enter into our lungs is much better because we have nice clean lungs. If you wash your hands with any detergent and you keep washing it with detergent, etc., and then put it under hot water, cold water, you'll feel that cold and hot water much more than you would in normal conditions. So the same way is with the lungs. Having said this, this is a health issue. But mostly younger people, and the population is all young, they say, well, you know, why are you talking about this? What will, we are, what will happen to everybody else will happen to us. So why talk about it? Jo hoga sabke saath wo amare saath bhi ho jayega. So what's so different? Why bother? Okay. Now take another issue about pollution which you may not have heard of, or maybe. Recently, this is in 2016, Harvard University published a report. And this report, you can note down, is www.thecogfxstudy.com. The COG FX study com. What did it do? It put, it put people in clean air in Boston, in a green platinum building and in one room they extra ventilated the room where the CO2 levels were under 600 ppm and the other room you're allowed in a platinum building you're allowed 600 ppm over ambient so the, the, the CO2 levels could have been a thousand ppm the average of CO2 in the world is 408 in Delhi today this morning it was 420 but it was still okay. Now what they found in within six hours, they tested people for different kind of skill sets. For example, people who use their mind to do work, their cognitive abilities went in six in about five, six hours, it went up by sixty-one percent at an average. Now what is cognitive abilities is the ability to put two plus two together. In other words, to be able to understand. It's not increasing your IQ, but it is able to achieve, allow you to achieve your full potential as a human being. Now, 
Over a period of seven days, they found that the people in the extraventilated room, their cognitive abilities improved by as much as 299%. Now, what does this mean? Now, this is all for all of you sitting here who are young. I don't see any old ones anyway, except maybe one or two here. So, for the young people, my view is that get your CO2 less than 600 ppm under your control. What is under your control is your bedroom. Six to one third or one fourth of your life you spend in your bedroom. So if you get your bedroom right at less than 600 ppm, then your cognitive abilities will be much higher. I spent some time in Japan talking. The governor there invited me to, one of the governors of the state invited me to talk about how to make the, the young Japanese smarter and better using plants. And we found, and this is what I said, I asked the audience, how many of you want to send their kids to Harvard, MIT, or maybe Tokyo University? A lot of hands came up. I said, how do you expect them to go to all these fancy good uh, schools? Because there will be a lot of competition. So unless your child is achieving the full potential, will not succeed. So the thing to do is to make sure that you achieve your full potential, and especially in your bedroom, in office, etc. you don't have control unless you, you're the owner or the boss, but at least at home you get it. Now, how to do it? If the CO2 levels outside are 420, you can open the window, you're all set. And TVOCs in Delhi this morning were 10, might run for me to you. And Harvard study said the TVOC should be under 50. And the CO2 level should be under 600. But if you are only a guy pouring water into glasses, then your cognitive abilities go up by only 18, 20%, not 299%. But let us say, all our ministers, the prime minister, etc., they had CO2 levels less than 600 ppm. And uh, the TVOC is under 50, they would achieve their full potential. So it has a fantastic application, whether it is human beings, private, public, schools, colleges, everywhere. And I think this is the bigger deal. Now, how to get the CO2 level down, especially in air-conditioned environments. If you have outside window open, then there is no problem. In fact, the good part is that most schools in India are not air conditioned, they're open schools. So the children are paying a price in terms of PM 2.5s and PM 1s, but as far as CO2 levels are concerned, they're fine. If you measure the CO2 levels in your bedroom, depending on the size of the room, but it could be as high as 2000 ppm. In the car, it is higher than 2000 ppm if you keep your vent closed. That's why when you drive long distances without the vent open, then you feel sleepy. And so people want to get out and do something. But if you keep opening the window a little bit now and then, making sure that CO2 levels are down, you will not feel sleepy. My point is, <coughs> if you know how to measure, most important thing is you must measure. Because you can do nothing about something which you don't know. If you don't know what the CO2 levels here, you don't know what the PM 2.5 in this room is, what do you do? You can't do anything. So you must measure. And that's the big investment. You have to have sensors to measure CO2 and at least PM 2.5 and VOCs. You can, in your own bedroom, I would say, don't do dhup bhakti, agar bhakti. Don't make your bedroom into a puja room. Make sure that you do it outside or keep your door and window open. Don't put perfume. Don't put your um, any kind of something which has any kind of smell. Just get it out. Keep, keep your bedroom at least as clean as possible without clutter. No books and magazines and phones and so on and so forth. Reduce them. So the VOCs will come down. Make sure that the paints are right. Don't, if you just use tuna pani, that's good enough. But don't get into this fancy stuff with high VOCs. No polish uh, on uh, tabletops, etc., which are giving out VOCs. VOCs, measurements, etc., more expensive for an average household, I would say. Just do eliminate what you can. No deodorants, no nail polish removers, no lipsticks in the bedroom. Put it outside, but nothing in the bedroom. And that would be increasing your cognitive abilities. My experience has been with most people that when you talk about health, 
I said, no. The standard answer, Jo sabte saath hoga, wo amare saath hoga, why worry about it? We are just concerned too much. I'm, I call myself a survivor. I've had, I got myself into trouble. I would not be standing here if, if I did not do what I did. So I have 7,000 plants in our building. The air quality is absolutely right. The PM 2.5s, etc., 115, and CO2 is okay. Uh, we measure uh, the VOCs. We, we do all the measurements. I would like to say, and and the bedroom is fine. Now, one more issue for especially for people who are coming from the waste area, the chlorine levels in air in Delhi are close to the WHO limit. I do not know what the reasons are, but with all my friends. I've checked and they all feel it is coming from the indiscriminate burning of waste in Delhi. You know what is happening. Now, if the CO2, if the chlorine levels are so high, we are into bigger trouble. When you have a bath and a hot water bath in the winter, you are in bigger trouble. Why? Because the water has chlorinated, it has chlorine. And with the heat, the chlorine emissions are much higher. But the chlorine levels has and the ambient is concerned so high and then with extra chlorine coming from the water we are well beyond so God help us as far as the chlorine is concerned, <coughs> concerned in our lungs so, or anybody from Noida here just check your air conditioners in, the, in Noida see how many years do they last and you'll have problems with it if your air conditioners are having problem do you think you're not having a problem you're having bigger problems <coughs> So think, but never mind. As I said, most people are not bothered about health. They think, doesn't matter, I'm young, what will, nothing is going to happen. It's a long time, but as far as your success is concerned, you're bothered because you want to succeed. So I would lay much more stress today on the CO2 rather than even the PM 2.5 for the youngsters. Because that is what you want to make sure that you beat competition, whether it is in your office, or whether it is at home, or whether you are a child, or wherever. And for the older people, less dementia. If the CO2 levels are lower, chances of getting Alzheimer's, etc. come down. In our own building, we have found that blood pressure levels come down. So, there are a lot of health benefits, but I think the bigger benefit for the younger people is succeed. And as far as government is concerned, I've been trying to tell them, say that we are looking for smart cities, but we don't want smart cities with dumb people. We want smart cities with smart people. So this is what, at least I have to say. And my own experience of 25 years has been, of growing fresh air, has been that there is a 42% probability that your blood oxygen levels go up by 1%, if you hang around there for eight hours. I didn't do any cognitive ability tests, but Harvard has done it. And it has also been <coughs> counter stamped, call it, by uh, Lawrence Berkeley National Lab. So you have two prestigious organizations who have clearly said, worry about CO2 as a pollutant to for the human brain. And I think we should make sure we do that if you want to succeed get ahead, everybody wants to become the CEO of the company or, or be the managing director, why not? If you don't have ambitions, you will get nowhere. So, there is a way to do it and I would say that think about it and do it. And all of you, whoever wishes to come and actually experience what we have done is, the reason we did it beyond me, uh, for beyond my benefit, uh, has been that let people touch and feel and experience that it can be done. So with technology as well as plants, we've been able to achieve perfect time. And I would like anybody who wants to come, send me an email. The organizers know where I am. And we'll arrange a visit by prior appointment that you can come and visit and at least take a deep breath. Thank you so much. <laughs>